Hi, welcome to my studio, I and I Studio. Um, I've got a lot going on today, so it's quite cluttered and messy with papers, fabric, canvas, panels, books. I've got so much to do, and I'm doing a lot at, at one time, which is the way that I do things. So rather than demonstrating anything today, I'm going to take you on a quick studio tour to show you some of the work that is finished, some that I'm working on, and some of the things that I have in mind for the future, what's coming up for me. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, welcome to my studio. I'm going to do a studio tour today, and you're going to see the nitty-gritty because I haven't cleaned anything, and this is how an artist works. I have a beautiful studio, and this is my workspace, which actually looks a bit like a library right now. I'm using a lot of old books in my um, work, so I've got the old books stacked up. I'm doing a lot of drawings, so I've got some drawing media, my gloves, brushes, rollers. There's my tripod for making videos. So let me take you around. Lately I'm cleaning my racks out, and these are two panels that I'm going to work back into. So I've taped the edges. This is a 36 by 36 inch, inch piece I've done after we lost our neighbor, William. I called it Marigold Picnic. Leave a space for those no longer with us to honor those that are no longer with us. And then down below, this is an interesting piece that I did years ago, and I'm actually revisiting this with the possibility of either working back into it or taking it off the stretcher bar and collaging it onto something else. But what I did was I took an imprint of an old shirt of mine, and I love the way the imprint turned out. You can actually see buttonholes really quite an interesting process. So here's the long shot of the studio. Those are two pieces that I recently finished and these are the pieces, um, some of the pieces where I'm using books, old books. So you can see the actual pages of the books. I painted over them, and then I've sanded back into them to reveal a little bit of the book. They're somewhat obscured. I've gone back into it with old paintings, like this one. So you can actually see where I put the name of the painting on the back, and the raw canvas. And again, down here, I've used part of an old painting and combined or collaged some Chinese paper for uh, practicing calligraphy. And we did that in China, practiced calligraphy. I never got very good, but I have used a lot of my practice calligraphy in my paintings. And People ask me, does it mean anything? It, it might, I'm sure there's a meaning, and I'm sure we were told. That was in 2001, and I don't remember the meetings. I'm, uh, meanings. I'm using them because I like the shapes. I do a lot of stencil work as well. And you can also see that on the large piece over here where I've really allowed the stencils to be very, very upfront and very graphic. A lot of times I bury the stencil work, but not in this case. These are some smaller works that I do, mixed media. Again, incorporating some of the calligraphy, some of the stenciling. 
I love the transparency of the what I used to call rice paper, and I'm finding out now it's not rice paper at all. It's most likely a mulberry paper. And here's the tabletop. Now this is a triptych, and I have separated it because I needed to get some detail shots. And you can see the surface where I have layered and then sanded back into it, creates a beautiful surface. And on this side, I had done some stencil work underneath and covered part of it with a yellowish mulberry paper, allowing the flowers to be prominent on the right side. And just the hint of the flowers under the surface where I've sanded. To that I add some pencil mark as well. Okay, long shot of the studio. Some more of my work there. My husband works over there. Okay, work in process. Here's another one of the books and the paintings. So I will most likely be attaching that piece of a painting that I tore off the stretcher bar onto this canvas covered with a book from Simplicity Sewing Made Easy. And this is the third panel of the triptych I showed you on the table. Now, coming over here, this is another one that I am working on with the books. And I took a piece of Chinese paper and I put all these marks with art graph on the paper. And I'm co covering the entire surface with those. Now, I like the way it looks so much the way it is that I'm kind of intimidated to go back into it at the moment. So I just want to live with it for a few weeks and see how I feel. I've got plenty of things to keep me occupied in the meantime. This is my shelf where I keep all of my supplies. These are my textile blocks. I make a lot of textile prints that I collage into the artwork. Use a lot of house paint. And what I like to do is go into the hardware store, look at the beautiful color chips, and I'll just have a little pint made up of the colors that are interesting me at the time. Um, I've got a lot of brushes. I'm fairly well organized. I'm not perfect, that's for sure. Here's my table again. Here's my sander. I do a, a lot of sanding of the surface, and recently I've been doing some sewing, and I found this nifty little box that fits all of my needles and thread that I ordered. Now this is a piece I'm working on, which is very interesting to me, because not only am I incorporating the old paintings, I'm also incorporating some silk neckties and some old kimono silk, which I'm actually stitching onto an old piece of canvas. And I love the way the fine silk looks with the rough canvas. I'm thinking a lot about my mother, the women who have worked with sewing. Uh, my mother sewed all my clothes and my doll's clothes. Um, a very thankless job being a mother, especially in the 40s and 50s. This is an edge of an old painting that I love because it is showing the staple marks and some of the block prints that I like to use. 
this is the real deal. This is how I really work. I'm not hiding anything from you. Okay? I wanted to show you this. Um, this is called Bull and the Wild Hair. This is the first painting I did with the pandemic when the lockdown happened and I had to isolate from my classes and my friends. And I uh, got frustrated. So what I did was I took the piece, it's quite large, I threw it on the ground, and uh, with a big Chinese mop brush, I made a big calligraphic mark. And it reminded me of a rabbit running. And I had said before I made the marks that the painting felt too tight and I was tired of dealing with my own bullshit. So I decided to name it Bull and the Wild Hare. And it actually was accepted into the De Young Museum um, open call. So I'm just honored about that. I also do some cold wax work. Here's one of my cold wax pieces on panel. My husband and I studied with Jerry McLaughlin and uh, Rebecca Crowell in Greece last summer. So I'm definitely interested in the cold wax. Okay, let me take you around the studio, see some of my other work. Now, this one is not collage. This is more just pure paint, layered paint, acrylic, rust. Many, many, many layers. I did use stencils, and I've covered most of the stencils up so that it still has a floral feeling, but not so as in your face. Um, Purple Hydrangeas is the name of this one. These are some collage pieces I've done by sewing fabrics and papers onto paper and then framing. I did these a few years ago and I am loving them more and more these days because they are relating to my current in interests, which are the women's work. You can see my hand print on the lower left-hand side, the black hand. That's another thing I've fooled around with throughout the years, is my hand print as a statement of, as soon as I lift my hand up, it's history. Let me peek around the corner. Another cold wax piece, maybe I can come from this angle. Another cold wax on panel piece that I recently did. And here's a couple pieces. This is another one of my mixed media with a textile print, log prints, and stencil. And I did a series on butterflies, kind of a political statement about no borders, sanctuary, uh, butterflies migrating freely from Mexico. Cold wax again on panel. Butterflies again. And a couple more cold wax over here to show you some of my smaller mixed media pieces. And then the, this is a cold wax piece here. Also, this one and this one. And I have a wall over here that I'll 
touch on and show you what's going on with this wall. Um, this piece, I call it Indian School. This is a mixed media piece where I have put probably six or seven layers of collage down, painted over it, and then tore and sanded back into it. Then I drew the figure on top of it, reminding me of a one of the children that was abducted to learn Christianity in the Indian schools that we hear so little about in our history books. Here again is some mixed media pieces with calligraphy. Same here. Lately I'm combining a lot of drawing with fabric and paint. This is interesting because I've actually woven, I've cut up and woven some of the drawings and then collage them onto the surface. This one I just cut them into grids and this one gets a little more complex. couple more collage pieces, smaller. I recently did this one to honor my mother. I worked it on raw canvas, which usually gives a very muted color tone that I love. I've incorporated some of my drawing, some of my calligraphy, books and old photos. I did some cross stitching here. I stitched some hash marks like she was counting the days that she could escape from her five children. It cracks me up because it takes all I can to do some little hash marks whereas my mother would elaborately embroider her pillowcases and then crochet the edges, and that is before she ironed them to put on the beds and cook the meals and sew all the clothes, five kids. I call this unsung hero. Here's another of the old paintings that I'm reworking with collage, books, drawings. Blank canvas in process. I've just began the surface preparation of this one. It's an old painting I'm working over. And I collaged paper over that and then painted. I'm going to take you over here to the painting racks. So you get some idea of the larger work I've done in the past. This is a part of a triptych. Seven and a half feet high by five feet wide. This is one third of the painting. So the whole thing is 15 feet wide by seven and a half feet tall. This is oil and tar. And I have a lot of older work in these racks being stored, <clears throat> along with, this is a more recent piece on a panel using collage, paint, and this one. which I love for its surface. More oil and tar using the handprints. My mother was a sharecropper working on the beet fields 
in Colorado in a German community. And I was honoring her with this painting, Blood from a Beat. I did this, oh my goodness, I was in graduate school, probably about 2002. And that's it for the studio tour. I hope you enjoyed the studio tour. Remember, art is a practice, and practice makes perfect. Everything I showed you today is the way my studio looked when I walked into it. There was no preparation whatsoever. So keep up the practice. Be safe. Give me a thumbs up if you like video and you would like to see more content. Also, I'd appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. Thank you.